Thank you, Pastor Michael. I appreciate that. And uh, it has been an adventure uh, for 25 years together. And uh, we're getting older together. Uh, we are getting grayer together. Uh, we are doing all of the things together. And so I couldn't be more thrilled. Uh, he is not only my best friend in the ministry, he is simply my best friend. And I'm grateful for it. All the things he said are true. We have been through the thick and thin, and uh, we have been in the dark. It might have just happened this summer at camp, and um, we have, I'm just kidding, and the, and the best of times together, and uh, it, it, he's been there lockstep, been an encouragement to me. I can call if I need some encouragement, he is going to be uh, there me every single time. So I'm grateful. Uh, I'm grateful to have the, the pulpit. Man, what wonderful music this morning. And uh, Brother John, that was a great medley with your wife and daughter. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, Miss Loretta, the, the uh, offertory was beautiful. Thank you for that. And um, man, just the, the spirit of the singing uh, was a blessing. It, it shows that the church is alive. And, uh, and then, well, man, some great events coming up. Please make sure you're a part of those. Uh, I wished I could be a part of them. Uh, I, I love missions this Wednesday night. Whatever you're doing with that, you're going to want to be. There's no bad part of missions and so uh and then your um uh, old-fashioned sunday right your homecoming listen you could you could really use that all right it, it, to your advantage here's what i mean just how old-fashioned do you really want to be <laughs> like here's my fear every time we've had old-fashioned sundays here's my fear every time i have one one of my members will probably come to me and say well pastor I'll be there on Old Fashioned Sunday, but then I'll be out for a month because it's an old fashioned tradition that you only had church once a month. <laughs> I, don't pull that here. All right. That's, do, do not do that. All right. Don't go that old fashioned on them. Just have a fun time with it. Grateful for it. On that same day, Pastor Michael, interestingly enough, talking about the church plants and uh, what the Lord ever allowed me to do in the ministry, it still blows my mind. On the 29th of September, James Veers will be chartering a brand new church that he is planted in Maxwell, Iowa, in his hometown. James Veers was my first convert in the church plant in Iowa. And early on, God called him to preach. And then he was a young man in his early 20s. His wife died. They had three children under the age of five at the time. She passed away of cancer. It was super aggressive. It was super fast when it happened. Uh, he was a full-time firefighter. He had to figure out how to just live life. And so he never put that, that call to preach on the back burner that wouldn't be the way to say that but he had to get some things done uh, before he could really pursue that and recently uh, he's just been obedient to the Lord and called me the other day he wanted me to be a part of that I'm not going to be able to be but I'm so grateful uh, that God uses men uh, to, to start churches just like this and uh, your pastor I could tell some really funny stories on your pastor but I don't want to take up all the time with that this morning um, you know so, like if you didn't know this about your pastor he's a cowboy is the most unbelievable horseman that you have ever seen in your life. When he came to Iowa, we had a couple of horses, and uh, my daughter would barrel raced for a while, and so we put Pastor Michael on Susie. She was a 24-year-old mayor that had worked cattle and, and barrel raced her whole life. She could barely stand up straight. And so he got on there, and he started riding through the yard, and he's got that, you, you, have you seen that Pastor Michael confidence look before? <laughs> Like, I got this figured out. And then all of a sudden, it just got weird real quick. And I could tell because his face shifted. And I was like, oh, he's in trouble. And the next thing I know, she's going right through our garden, right through the playground, right through. And I'm like, and then it hit me. He's not, he's not steering that horse. That horse is doing whatever it wants to do. Michael's just holding on for dear life, hoping he doesn't fall off. 
<laughs> and so we've got some great stories together, and we have been all over, and uh, I'm grateful for it. Uh, some of those experiences have been wonderful and life-changing. Uh, they have also been life-changing and horrible for other reasons, and so uh, we certainly have, and I'm, I'm grateful. Michael, I love you. Thank you for having me today. Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, we're going to read a passage and then um, we're going to, uh, I'm going to give a few introductory words and then we're going to talk about that particular passage. Romans chapter 5, verse 11, Romans chapter 5 and verse 11, Michael, do you stand here? I should know that. All right, will you please stand for the reading of God's word and... Um, Seems like if this is home away from home, I'd have known that. I'm sorry I didn't. But Romans chapter 5 and verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For, in through the, uh, for if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto, uh, unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound." That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, we're grateful to be in the meeting house today. I am thankful for the song. I am thankful for the uh, wonderful lifting of voices by the body of Christ here. I am grateful for the membership and their love to me and care of me. I'm thankful for Pastor Michael and Miss Katie and their family, for Pastor Chuck and Miss Beverly and the legacy that lives here at Charity. Lord, I'm grateful to have just a small part in that. And today, I pray that you would allow the scriptures to change lives. We thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. Let me ask a question. In your minds right now, how many of you can think of what might possibly be the greatest gift you've ever received, carnally speaking? I, I, you know, we, we won't, we'll, we'll forego the idea that, that it's assumed in the room we're full of people who are born again. That, that is a gift that we're going to talk about today, but I want you to think about those birthdays, those Christmases, those anniversaries, those occasions where uh, there was a gift given you that sticks out in your mind. Can you think of one of those? If you can, raise your hand. If you, I won't call on you. I won't make you tell what it is. I can think of several times in my life where uh, there was a gift I received and, and, and there'll be some Pharisees in the room but everyone likes to get a gift. Now you're going to say, no, nah, I'd rather give them than get them. You're a liar. <laughs> everyone likes to get a gift. 
no matter how small, no matter how big, they just want to know that someone has thought of them and that they have thought of them in a special way. Now, as I get older, I will and do enjoy to give gifts more often than I like to get them. But I still like to get them. I can think of a time back, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. So uh, growing up in Detroit, uh, I, my, my mom's side of the family were all Canadians. Uh, I, then my grandmother, I never knew my grandfather. He died when my mom was young. And, uh, but they were um, from Ireland by way of Ottawa, Canada, and they were potato farmers. And my grandmother passed in Detroit, still a Canadian citizen. And so it was sort of bred in me early to enjoy and like hockey as a sport. I know, I'm a communist. Whatever you think of me, that's fine. I like it. I love it. We grew up going to Joe Lewis Arena and watching the Red Wings. And I, I grew up going up to Ann Arbor, to the University of Michigan, and going to what's called the barn and watching them play hockey hockey in the barn and it is a part of my fiber I love it and there was a time where uh, there was a Christmas I had two distinct things stick out to me about that Christmas I was starting to get a little older I was starting to get to the place where I wasn't sure the man in the big red suit was real or not like I'm trying to be sensitive here I'm looking around to <laughs> everybody okay I'm not trying to ruin anybody's life here. <laughs> but, but I remember thinking, I asked my dad, okay, start reasoning things out in your life as a kid. I said, Dad, we don't have a chimney. How does Santa come? Well, son, I know we don't have a chimney. When you don't have a chimney, you just leave the front door unlocked and he just comes in the front door. I said, okay. I believe that. So that year, I, see, I, I devised a plan. I went to bed when my mom said me and my brothers had to go to bed. And uh, we went, I went to sleep for a while. Uh, and then when I knew they were good and asleep and in bed, I got up and I went to the front door. We had a big uh, lounge chair by the front door and, and uh, it, it angled into the room. And I slid in behind that chair and I thought, I'm just going to sit here till he comes. And I did, what I didn't expect was... The hot air vent was right behind the chair. And so I got in there and I got tucked in and I got cozy and that, the heater kicked on. And it made me really sleepy. And so I fell asleep behind the chair, woke up the next morning by still sitting there behind the chair, and I jumped up because I could tell it was daylight. All the presents were under the tree. And my first thought was, I missed them. I did all of this work and I didn't get to see them come. But all of that was swept away when I looked under the tree and I saw the holy grail of gifts. Because that year was the year I got all of my hockey gear that I had always wanted. There was a stick and skates and a helmet, which I never wanted to wear, should have. My mom warned me about that. I have permanent damage to my head because I did not wear that helmet. And that's not a joke. I was playing hockey one night. It was they, they, up there. They play pickup hockey like you play pickup basketball down here. And so I'm playing. I go to the corner to get a puck. I get checked from behind. My hands get tied up in my waist. And I, I, the force was so great that it threw me to the ground. And when it threw me to the ice, the first thing that hit the ice was my head. I didn't always wear glasses. This is because I'm old now. I, I, my head hit the ice and I shattered this entire eye socket. Now, I didn't know that's how bad it was. It just hurt. And it was co really cold out. And so I thought, I didn't feel it. I mean, I could tell it was there. It was throbbing a little bit. But I played for a while longer, drove home, got in bed. It was late. My parents were asleep. I got to sleep on this side. And as soon as I fell asleep, I rolled over in my bed, not knowing. As soon as I got to this side, I sat straight up in bed and screamed so loud that my dad came in the room. And he's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know, Dad. I said, my head hurts. He said, like a headache? I said, no, I was playing hockey tonight. And he looked at me and he goes like this. He goes, and I was like, that can't be good. <laughs> I got home and I was kind of late. Like they didn't know I was late. I was kind of past my curfew. But I slid in the door and just went straight to bed. I didn't make, I didn't go to the bathroom. I didn't, I didn't look at myself. It was bad. 
Like by then, the swelling had, had gotten bad. And uh, what happened was all the bone chips were sitting down in my cheek. And so when my dad saw me, my cheek was like this big. And I didn't know it. And so he's like, we better go to the OR. So we went. They just built it all back. I don't know how they do that. They just built it all back. Made me look halfway decent, which really isn't true. And it, you know, I have trouble in all the airports. That's how that goes. That's a real thing. It does go off. They're like, what happened? I don't know. <laughs> what really freaks people out are, the, are my dentists. They do those x-rays and they do that x-ray of this side of my face and they can see all of this down here and they're like, what is that? <laughs> Here's the thing about that gift. I couldn't wait to open that stick, open those skates, get, get outside, find a pond, use them. It was the greatest Christmas of my life. Since then, I can think of a few greater gifts that I've probably received over time in my life, but that was a great one. But can I encourage you that if you are born again, now that's, that's key to what we're going to talk about. If you are born again, God has given you some pretty amazing gifts. Gifts that only He can give. Now there's things that we can give that God also gives. I know your pastor's teaching you on the attributes of God. Mercy is an attribute of God. Grace is an attribute of God. He can give grace and He can give mercy unmatched like no one else and none of us can. But we can, by the way, give grace and mercy. We just can't give it at the level He gives it. We can't do it with the kind of spiritual maturity that He gives it. But I would, listen, this, this will sound, let this sink in because it'll sound controversial if you do not let this soak for a second. But God gives the kind of gifts that no human can give. And those are the gifts we need to recognize. Only the things God can give are truly God-given gifts. Let's talk about a couple of those. Just I, I won't give Bible references for sake of time, but you'll know these. These will be familiar to them, uh, to you. Uh, you will have heard of them. Uh, these gifts that God gives, that only He can give, are some pretty wonderful gifts. The first one I'll start with is His Son. His only begotten Son. Only God could give us His only begotten Son. Only He can do that. And the Bible says that He gave Him to the whole world. You know John 3.16 doesn't say that He gave Him up. It says He gave Him. That's a different kind of a gift. He gave Him because He knew what He would be. He gave Him because He knew what He would do. He gave Him because He knew what it meant to the whole world. But he gave his son. Now I have two sons. One of them is with me today. There's been times in my life where I thought I could certainly give one of them up. <laughs> but it would not have been the way God gave his son. It would not have been the same. Do you know that since we've been saved, God also gave to you the Holy Spirit. I think that we miss the, 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 the amazing gift the Holy Ghost is to us. He's a comforter. He is a teacher. He is one who will direct us if we will yield to Him. We, we miss the wonderful gift of Him having given at salvation the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit for us seals us unto the day of redemption. He does things that only God can do for us through that gift. How about a sound mind? Now you might feel as if at some point you've lost yours. But when you got saved, the Bible tells us that God gives us a sound mind. I'm thankful for that. Because we live in a day, how many of you recognize we live in a day that not everybody has a sound mind today? But we do. Because God gave it to us. Let the world tell you you're wrong, but rest in the confidence that your sound mind aligns with the living God that rules the world. How about eternal life? He gave you 
eternal life through the Son. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. What else has He given you? You know He gave you a grace gift for service. Grace gift is, is found also in the book of Romans and is different from spiritual gifts, but He gave to you a gift to then in turn serve the body of Christ with. He gave that to you so that you could be a blessing and serve. You say, well, I don't have a title. I don't have a Sunday school class. I don't sing up here with everybody else. I'm not an usher. I don't take up the offering. I don't have anything to do here at charity. You couldn't be any more wrong. God gave you a grace gift. You need to discover what that gift is and use it to serve the body here at charity. Amen. That's right. Do you know that in um, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the Bible says that He gave us the ability to eat and drink and enjoy the good of all His labor. Can I summarize that? Can I paraphrase that? He lets us enjoy life. And that's a gift that only God can give through a saved, born-again believer that has peace. The last thing, and it's not an exhaustive list, but the last thing I'll give you on my list is this. He gave to us the Scriptures. Aren't you grateful that we don't have to figure out anything on our own? He gave us His Word. How many of you today would be refreshed to know in 2024 that you could go to a grown man, look him in the eyeball, shake his hand, and get His Word and know that he was going to keep it? Now there are some men, Pastor Chuck being one of them, that certainly would be a man that would keep his word. Amen. But not like God can keep his word. And he gave it to us to be stewards of. What a wonderful gift this is. And this isn't for me to change, alter, do anything with. I just get to keep the gift and enjoy it. But there's a gift we haven't talked about, and it's the one that the passage deals with. And I think oftentimes we misalign what that gift really is. And I'm not here uh, to create controversy. I hope you don't misunderstand what I'm about to say here. Many people think that that, gr that gift is grace. The Bible actually says we received the gift by grace. It doesn't say that the gift is grace. And here's why that's so important. My earlier statement that the gifts God gives are only gifts God can give. If I can give grace, it's not much of a gift. If, you, do you recognize what I'm trying to, to, to communicate to you? If God can give grace and I can give grace, that gift, although wonderful, is not that special if I can also give it. But God gave me something by His grace that only He could have given, I could never do myself, and it changed everything about my life. And that's the gift I want to make sure you see today. It's not going to be wrapped under a tree. You're not going to get it under the balloons at your birthday. You won't see it on an anniversary present. It's going to be found in that book He gave us. And here's the gift. It's the gift that started all the others. I can go as far confidently as to say that without this particular gift in the passage, you cannot know the other gifts. You cannot know His Son. You cannot know eternal life. You cannot know the Holy Spirit. You cannot enjoy life. You cannot understand the Scriptures fully. There are many things that these gifts... We enjoy because of the very first gift that he gave to man and that you could receive today. Now, much like any message ever preached on a gift, you understand that it only becomes a realized gift when what occurs? You receive it. And you use it and open it and, and know what it is. Right now, this is wrapped up in a way that it just looks like something you're not aware of. But when God opens the gift for you, you then know what's in the box. If I can use that, I'm not, not, I'm not trying to degrade the Word of God. But, but we see what's being taught in His Word. And the Bible says faith, 
which is what's required unto salvation, is by what we understand in the substantial evidence of His Word. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Substantial evidence gives us the knowledge of God so that we can then in turn be in a position to receive the gift He's given. Look, if you will, in Romans chapter 5. The Bible word and definition for the day is found in the first verse we read, verse 11. By whom we, and that's Jesus Christ, the whom is Jesus Christ, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we have now received the atonement. The atonement. The, the, the shed blood forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ. The atonement. He says in verse 12, wherefore, and he goes on to describe that one man, sin entered into the world. By one man, salvation can be known. He goes in verse 15 and he says, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Not just the offense can be known of all men, but the gift can also be known of all men and was given unto all men. Notice in verse 15, he also says, For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace. It doesn't say the gift is grace. The gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, Him alone, that is what the atonement is. There is no other way to know eternal life. There is no other way to salvation. It's by one man, Jesus Christ, in His shed blood atonement, hath abounded unto many. You are one of many. Verse 16. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. By one man, the whole world knows sin. That one man was Adam. Now by one man, Jesus Christ, the whole world can receive and have a gift that only God has given. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift. That's mentioned several times in the passage. It is a gift, but it is a free gift. If I were to ask for a show of hands, and I will not do that to embarrass anyone, many of you will have received a gift that you know came with a few strings attached to it. God doesn't do that. It's a free gift. It's something that only God can give you. It goes on to say in verse 16, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Let me stop for just a second and talk about that is of many offenses. That free gift God offers covers all the offenses you brought with you to the table. Many offenses. You say, well, preacher, what about this offense? Yes. Yes. What about that offense? Yes. What about this? Of course. Every offense can be found justified in the atonement of Jesus Christ through the free gift that He has offered man. And not just, He didn't offer it to one man, it came by one man. He offered it to all men, the Bible says. Verse 17, for if by one man offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace. So it's an abundance of grace. That's true. Grace plays a part in what we're doing here. That is true. But you must also receive of the gift which shall reign in life by one, and that's Jesus Christ. And here's everything's built up to verse 17 because it describes to us what the gift is. It is the gift of what? Read your King James Bibles. What's the word? Righteousness. The gift of righteousness. You cannot have a relationship 
with the Son of God who is also God unless you're righteous. You cannot have the Holy Spirit who is the third person of the Trinity of God without righteousness. You cannot have a life to be enjoyed abundantly apart from righteousness. You might have some fun on occasion for a season, but you cannot enjoy life the way God intended you and gave you. You cannot have a sound mind. You cannot have eternal life. You, cannot, you do not obtain a grace gift to serve apart from righteousness. It all starts with the first free gift. Righteousness. Righteousness is exactly what you think it is. Now, if you're of the generation from the 80s, where you're thinking this is a catchphrase, that's righteous, man. <laughs> You'd be right. Because it's exactly that. It is perfection. It is wonderfulness. It is everything wrapped up into one word. Atoned. Justified. It all comes through the same gift, which is righteousness. Amen. Do you know that I can give you a lot of things, but I cannot give you righteousness? You know why? Because I'm still a sinner who only understands righteousness in my inner man because my inner man has been made righteous. But this flesh... As we talked about in Sunday school, this evil that is still present with me limits me from sharing what I have with you. I can share the knowledge of what I have with you, but I cannot give to Pastor Chuck perfection. I cannot make him justified. But you know who can? God. God can atone your many offenses. I grew up, as I said, in Detroit. My mom raised us in our home as Catholics. It was not until much later in life that I got saved. Later after that, that I got called to preach. But as a boy, I was, um, my, my mom had many siblings, one of which, a sister who was a nun, being from an Irish, strong Irish home, uh, Catholicism was all we knew. My dad worked. My mom stayed home because my mom stayed home. My dad uh, my dad, I was not raised in a Christian home. He just left the home stuff to my mom, which basically meant school, food and care, and church. My dad never had an input on that. So my mom did what she only knew, which is to put me in school in a Catholic church and take me to the Catholic church. Starting in kindergarten, I had nuns for teachers. The whole thing black gowns, habits, the whole thing. I learned I had great penmanship at one time because every day I'd get my, that's a real thing, I got my knuckles wrapped with a ruler if I didn't just touch all the lines just right. Now I don't care, it's, I'm just rebellious now. <laughs> I just look like a doctor. <laughs> it, but I can tell you this, I didn't have righteousness because I went to church. I wasn't given righteousness by the church the way they like to claim. It was a gift given to me and has always been available to me and I just didn't know it. But the question today is do you now see it? I wish I could wrap it up in a pretty little box and put a bow on it and say Here's a gift for you. It'll be the most unbelievable thing you've ever opened. But I can't do it. Because it's not my gift to give. Now, let me check all the other Pharisees in the room. I know I'm the only one that's ever been given a gift, didn't like it, gave it to somebody else as a gift. <laughs> but see, the, the perfection of God is that he's got enough righteousness to give to everyone. He, he's, it doesn't have, there's no chance you don't like what he's given you. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
righteousness is what only God can give. And it's free. Notice what he says next in verse 18. Therefore, if that's true, if the gift is righteousness and it's a free gift and it comes by grace and it comes of God and it justifies a man for all of his offenses and it is the atonement for sin, then as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one. See, here's how we know that only God can give this gift. is because He's the one that's righteous. And He's the one that can then pass it on and give it. By the righteousness of one. And we've already, the Bible's already defined in verse 17 that that one life is Jesus Christ. In Him alone. By the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. I, and he goes on to talk about, you know, he talked about from, uh, from, from Adam to Moses. No one sinned the way Adam sinned, but every man from Adam to Moses was guilty of sin. Much like still today, all men are guilty of sin. You're born guilty. I didn't write that. I didn't come up with that. That's how God has allowed it. You are born into offense. And you need a way out of that offense to know eternal life. And God gave you a free gift. And if you'll receive it, that righteousness, that gift will allow you eternal life. Look what the Bible says about it in verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, that's Jesus Christ, shall many be made righteous. Notice the word in verse 19 in your King James is not all. I hate to say it, the reason you need to be here on Wednesday night and learn about missions and be encouraged about your effort in missions is because that, ver that word in verse 19 is not the word all. You just have to keep preaching the truth so many can be made righteous. You say, how many is that preacher? I have no idea. That's why I keep preaching the gospel. That's why we keep supporting missions. That's why we keep sending missionaries and planting churches. He says in verse 20, moreover, moreover, as if God hadn't already given us enough. More than that, the law entered, that the offense might abound. You say, well, I thought I was a pretty good guy. I didn't think I really needed righteousness. I thought I was doing a pretty good job all on my own. Do you know that the Bible says that the law makes our offenses abound to the point we need nothing but a Savior? He goes on to say, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. It's that verse that leads everyone to think that the gift was grace, but it's the grace of God that says, you know what, I don't have to do this, but I'm going to give my son, Jesus Christ, so that through His righteousness, all men have a chance if they receive the free gift to also be justified and made righteous. That doesn't mean you'll live perfect. That doesn't mean that you'll know perfection this side of heaven. But it does mean you'll be sealed to an eternal life that will know a glorified body and a sinless nature. Do you know of all the things, humanly speaking, of all the things I am the most looking forward to, based on what we taught earlier in Sunday school, is to enter that glorified state in my body and know that I never again have to do something that is wrong or evil. And there's a lot of things to have hope to see and do and experience. Sunny days, no more pain. Listen, I'm not getting younger. Everything hurts. And it only hurts more when I actually do something. I don't even have to do anything and it hurts. 
I told my wife a couple weeks ago, and I, I know, I know what it is. It's obvious. It's the elephant in the room. It's this elephant in the room. I know my problem, but my elbow right now hurts so bad that it almost makes me want to cry when I wake up in the morning. And I didn't even do anything. I'm just old. Look what he says in verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that offense might abound, but, but, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might, might, there's an expectation here, might, Grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life. The only reason might exist in verse 21 is because it's up to you to decide what you're going to do with righteousness and the gift God's given. Are you going to take it and open it and receive it? Are you going to take the gift, the free gift God has given His Son for and do something with it? Decide by faith that you're going to trust in that gift to get you to eternal life. Because the Bible's very clear, there's only one way that happens. It's not your attendance today. It's not what you put in that offering plate. It's not whether you come and support missions on Wednesday night. It's not how old-fashioned you are. It's not who you know. It's not what you can try to do. It is only by Christ and His righteous gift to all men. Verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life. Maybe you're here today and you're thinking, I never thought eternal life was possible. I can tell you it's not through wild scenarios and theories like uh, reincarnation. Eternal life is real to everyone. It's where you spend that eternal life that's going to make a difference with what you do with this gift. If that gift of righteousness, that free gift God has offered to you goes unopened, your eternal life will be in a place called hell. Because if you believe at all that heaven exists, you must, by the scriptures, also believe hell is real. And every person in this room and every person, every man in the world will spend an eternal life in only one of two places. There's a lot of reasons why what the society is doing today with causing you to doubt and question everything this, this book teaches. One man, one woman. If you can just get someone to doubt that simple teaching, then all of a sudden you're not sure if there is a heaven and a hell. If a man can look like a woman and a woman can look like a man, then maybe hell doesn't really exist and all of it looks like heaven. People are going around thinking, well, I just identify with heaven, so I'm good. That's not how that works. If you leave the gift unopened, your eternal life will be spent in damnation. If you open it and receive it and take the righteousness that only God can give you, then your eternal life is with Him forever. In His presence, praising Him the way you sang those praises on that screen this morning. It is our forever gift. I feel like in my lifetime I've given some pretty good gifts to some people I love very much. But I know that gift I gave has a timeline. It has an expiration date. It's not going anywhere eternally. But the only thing I know today to give to anyone are the very words to the gift that only God can give you. I cannot give it to you as much as I want to. That whole Catholicism con uh, conversation we had earlier, I grew up going into a box and telling a man my sins, hoping that he could make me righteous. He couldn't because it wasn't his gift to give. It was only and it only God's to give you. Amen. And you have to decide if you're going to accept it. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we've had in the meeting house this morning. Lord, you have given us as Savior.